Hello everybody and welcome to Gaming with Zombie, except today it's not Gaming with Zombie. Today it's Zombie Tells You a Stupid Story. Um, and also a channel update. So I haven't put anything up in I don't know how long. Life's been really hectic. Um, I dropped out of school. Uh, it wasn't paying the bills, unfortunately. Uh, I loved class. I loved learning all of the things that I was learning. I, I was in mortician school, which is really interesting. I, if that's a thing that you might be interested in, it's very neat. Um, so, uh, unfortunately part of that problem is that, uh, in that industry, they don't really pay you, uh, when you do your apprenticeship, which is like a two year long thing. A lot of places don't pay you for that time. So I was having to work um, a part-time job as well as try and go to school, which is uh, about 35 hours uh, a week in, in the classroom. Uh, then about 35 to 40 hours worth of homework outside of the classroom, uh, as well as studying for tests and the, the exams and all that. And then uh, a 20 hour job, um, which was not paying bills at all, and then a 30-hour-a-week internship. And unfortunately, I just didn't have the time or the money to do those things. So um, I, had to, I had to leave school, which was really depressing, and uh, I actually, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on the channel, uh, but that, that is a thing. Um, as a person... Um, I have dealt with depression for all my life. Uh, I, I actually, it was about fourth grade when I started having symptoms of depression. Um, third grade, my parents got divorced and uh, my, grand, my great grandmother died. And it really raised a lot of questions, which is really weird to think of like a third grade person. Because um, you're like, what, eight? eight years old, it's really weird to think of like an eight-year-old having these uh, deep personal questions about themselves and them, their, their, their lives. Um, and it's, yeah, uh, so depression kicked back in. Uh, we can talk about depression in some other, in some other video because uh, that's a thing, and I, I would like to do a video about that. I'm sure lots of people on YouTube do it, but I, I, I feel like the more people who are out and open with their mental illnesses uh, and talk about them and, you know, things that they went through and, and, and all of that, you know, it empowers other people who have that same, that same condition. And, and it's, it's beneficial because of that. Uh, so yeah, I got, I got really depressed. Um, I went back to work in kitchens again, which I love. I do enjoy working in kitchens. It's a very hard job. It's very time consuming, especially during the summertime when most places uh, pick up business. So as it is currently summertime, that's why I haven't done anything with the channel in a long time. Um, summer kicked in and I just, I haven't, I haven't had time. Uh, so as for the channel, I'd like to start bumping out into doing um, some other stuff. Uh, as much as I enjoy the gaming aspect of it, I feel like there's there's other things that I'd like to do as well um, that do not necessarily have to do with gaming. I'd like to do more podcasts, uh, even though I know a lot of people aren't don't necessarily listen to those or, or watch those videos as you know it's just a screen with me talking um as a, most of my videos are but uh it's definitely a thing that i would like to go into i just i really enjoy sharing stories and i really enjoy talking to people and i hope that i can get a lot more feedback from people because that's that's a thing when, when this is a back and forth medium and i love that about youtube and i would love to have more feedback from people who see things you know, part of the joy of of being on a platform like this is being able to have that that back and forth, and that's that's really important to me. So I, I want to do that, uh, which is, you know, it's on my agenda. Especially now that I'm I'm trying to go back into I'm, I'm feeling better. I've I've 
you know, progress through that depression period, I want to start making videos again because this is something that I really enjoy. Even though people don't watch it, I enjoy doing it because it's a documentation for myself. Uh, as the years go by, you know, I can look back at what I was doing and the stories I was telling and the things that impacted me that day because these videos are made like that. And it lets me go back and look at my own life. So a lot of this is for anybody who wants to see it and maybe get some sort of entertainment. And a lot of it's just for me to keep up with my own life. I find that I have a lot of difficulty keeping up with things like that. Days get lost. You know, Facebook actually does a really good job of that posting. Like, what did you do three years ago? Oh, I was talking about something stupid that day. <laughs> what did you post on YouTube three years ago? Oh, I was talking about something stupid that day too. So that's kind of where, where I want to go with that. So here was, uh, oh, that was a clap. I'm sorry. Ooh, <laughs> my bad. Oh, so what I wanted to do today was uh, a little update, did that, talk about where I was, did that. And now I want to tell a story because it's one of my favorite stories to tell people and it's super funny to me and uh, it's just one of those things that I'd love to have it out there on the internet because it's so amusing. Now, granted, these stories are not going to be as funny in my opinion because I can't, I'm very visual when I talk. Um, to lead into this story, a little back story about me, a little back knowledge, a little information. I am a Scottish on my father's side of the family, and I am Sicilian on my mother's side of the family. If you don't know what Sicilian is, it is uh, Italian. It's a type of Italian. Because there's more than one type. Hey, My family comes from uh, Bisequina. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> as a person of Scottish descent, um, I wear a kilt. I find them to be drastically more comfortable than, uh, oh, the point of that whole interlude, the original point of that was, I'm very visual when I talk. I speak with my hands. I do a lot of hand gestures. I do a lot of signage. I uh, am very, very verbal with my body. <clears throat> body language is key. Hey, -oh. so going back to heritage, I, I am Scottish, so I wear a kilt. If you don't know what a kilt is, a kilt is basically a skirt for men. It's uh, pleated in the back and flat in the front. It's got uh, two aprons. And traditionally, you don't wear anything underneath your kilt. Uh, <laughs> that's called being regimental. As uh, in the army, we'll call it that. All of these terms are just Americanized versions of things. But when you were in the army, you your uniform was a kilt. Uh, they actually created the modern kilt. And uh, if you look at World War One, World War One pictures, I think it was. It may have been World War Two as well. Uh, they actually were wearing kilts when they went into combat. Uh, so you did not wear anything under your kilt. And this is a well-known thing. It's, it's actually uh, very common. Lots of people are aware of it. And there's a thing that exists called kilt checking. Now, a kilt check is where an individual... We won't give gender, but usually it's lady folks, but it can be men, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not a sexual thing. It's more like a funny ha-ha willies and penises and stupid stuff like that. So it's funny because everything to do with genitalia is, is hilarious. So funny. So <laughs> me and my mate, a uh, guy, uh, guy by the name of Dallas, Real handsome fellow, good-looking guy, uh, happens to look just like uh, the dude from Escape from L.A. God, I can't remember his name right now. I always just think of him as Dallas. Uh, he was in Kurt Russell. Nailed it. Kurt Russell is his name. Uh, my mate uh, Dallas looks just like Kurt Russell. So me and this Kurt Russell-looking motherfucker... We, uh, ooh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, side note, YouTube doesn't want you to curse anymore. Fuck you, YouTube. Eat a dick. So, me and Kurt Russell lookalike went to a, an Asian restaurant called Surin. It was uh, on a really busy road. Uh, it's a family restaurant. A lot of people go there. We were at a convention, and we were like, man, we need to get some food. So we stopped. We went over to this restaurant, and we're 
you know, opening the front door. And I live in the South, and down here in the South, we make a habit of holding the doors for people coming through. Well, there's this delightful family heading out the door of the restaurant. Me and my buddy Dallas are in kilts. We're holding the door for these people. Um, so it's a husband and his wife. Um, they're probably 10 years older than I am. Uh, they're very young children who are, I just want to, uh, to, to visualize this. They're about crotch height to me. Uh, and, uh, one's a little bit shorter than that. And then this 90 year old grandma, I'm talking like grandma, grandma, like you expect her to have some cookies and shit for you, cookies and some milk. Maybe some, some pasta sauce, as my grandmother would have had. My great-grandmothers both. Um, those are great stories, too. Uh, so, you know, here you are holding the door for these folks. This family's walking up, and the grandma comes up to me, and they all stop. And grandma's like, oh, well, hi there, young fellow. Look at you holding the door open for me. And I'm like, well, it's my pleasure, man, you know. I hope you guys are having a great day. And so, grandma... She reaches to the hem of my kilt. Now, a kilt comes to your knee. So she's reaching down to my kilt. And she's like, so what you got on under there, Sonny? And I'm just like, well, ma'am, I am wearing a kilt. And as I am supposed to be, there's nothing under it. But I really don't recommend that you check that as your children are uh, crotch high. So, I mean, you can check, but that is going to be on you to pay for their... Uh, very, very expensive psychological damage. And uh, needless to say, Grandma just, her hand hovers around my knee for just a moment. She looks up at me, looks me square in the eye, and looks at the kids, and she says, shit. And then just fucking leaves. And me and Dallas are just standing there looking at this lady like, did, did Grandma just try and get my junk? I think Grandma was just trying to get my junk. Uh, so that's, that's the grandma story. The, the reality is, uh, <laughs> I should have just run after her and been like, granny, wait, and then given her my phone number. Cause you know what I'm saying? Gummy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, um, if you ever want to, if you ever want to experience strange people stopping you in the street, uh, to fondle your genitalia, wear a kilt. <laughs> it, it happens way more than you would think. Um, it is considered rude. You should always ask first. Always ask permission to kilt check. Never, never just do it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever see me, though, I'll probably say yes. <laughs> but luckily, you'll never see me. Ooh. But yeah, so that's the kilt check story. Uh, it's uh, much funnier when there's visual gags to go along with it. I may, uh, one day I may actually record this stuff in, in video form. But, uh, yeah, that's a thing, man. I, I've never, uh, to this day, and this was, this was probably five or six years ago, to this day I still laugh my ass off about that little old lady being so upset when she realized that she was with her, her not, not just her grandchildren, mind you, her, her actual child was there. One of those two fine adults had to have been their child, you know? They didn't just have like a little grandma hanging out with them. No, that was one of their children. So literally grandma was trying to get some D in front of her child. I can only imagine that later on that night, the husband and wife were just having a conversation like, your mother's a slut, Bill. Your mother is a slut. That She tried to have some penis from that young gentleman and the kilt at the restaurant. This is just unacceptable. This is why we had to take her out of the nursing home. Um... Little tidbit, nursing homes, highest rate of STDs in the country. And grandma and grandpa getting it on, um, <laughs> which is actually a thing. Oh, God, it's so weird and creepy. So anyway, that was my story. That was my channel update. Expect these every once in a blue moon uh, just because I think that they're interesting and I like to share little stories like that. And if you have any questions about any of that, make sure to send me something in the comments section. Fuck it. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. Who cares? Uh, if you enjoy what you see, you know, subscribe and you'll see more of it. 
uh, feel free to message me. I'm available on Facebook. I'm available on YouTube. I have an email address up on Facebook. Um, honestly, you can you can find me. You can even send me messages on Facebook. I think that's a thing. You can actually directly message me on Facebook because I handle my own Facebook page. Yeah, it's summertime in Alabama. Video recording. Oh shit! I just outed where I live. Uh, I live in Alabama. Hey, what's up? What's up? Alabama is awful. It's a horrible state. Uh, there are a lot of cons conservative people, and not all of them are awful, but there are a lot that really are. Uh, there are also a lot of very southern people, which is fine if that's the thing that you're into. Um, I, I, I'm sure there's some sort of southern accent on me, but I, from what I understand, especially comparatively speaking, it's very minimal. But yeah, now you know. I live in the South and I live in Alabama. I, I've told, I've said before that I live in the Southeast. I kind of go back and forth a lot. I actually spend a whole lot of time in Georgia as well because I go to the convention scene out there. The convention scene in Georgia is, mm, oh, 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 so delicious. I also uh, have a convention coming up because it's, uh, it's almost my birthday. I do uh, my birthday at a convention every year. Pretty much every year. It's called Play On Con. If you haven't heard about it, it is basically a summer camp convention. All of the beautiful things that you love about summer camps, celebrity guests, uh, panels, costuming, coupled with the joy of summer camp. It's actually an insanely unique experience, and I really love it because uh, as an adult, you know, I, I lament my lack of summer camp as a child, and now I get to have it. Uh... So I, I like to go and drink a lot and hang out and meet new people and chit-chat and just have a, a grand time. For my birthday every year, uh, well, this is the second year I've done it, but for my birthday, I like to do what's called the Cardboard Combat Tournament, which is basically I give uh, people time to build their armor and weapon out of cardboard, and then we have a tournament, and the goal is to knock people's armor off, and it is super-duper fun. Uh, God, people got rough last year. Man, I thought there was going to be blood. There actually was bloodshed. There was bloodshed at this event. And the whole time, all I can think of is, yes, fight for my pleasure, plebeians. That was me. That's me. That's what I sound like in my head. For some reason, I sound like Darth Sidious in my head. It might be, uh, might be an underlying issue. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to cut this video, so thank you all for listening. I hope that you have found some sort of interest in this. If not, sorry about that. Well, what are you doing here anyway? You don't care. So anyway, do all the things, click all the buttons, send me messages, ask me questions, and I will catch you all later. Bye-o!